Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. In today's video, we're gonna combine the formula with the waterfall baseline technique to create a really nice reharmonization, a new chord progression for a hymn called Great Is Thy Faithfulness, which is a really, really nice melody. It's simple and it's great for reharmonizing. Now, newsflash, I'm Jewish, but I keep talking about gospel music and the titles of these videos, so I figured we should do a hymn. And this is this really is a, a great melody, so uh, I think we'll have some fun with it. Um, anyway, let's get to it. Uh, in case you forgot, the formula, which I referred to just a second ago, is if X melody note is Y chord tone, what chord could it be? And I'll recap that with the actual example in a second. And the water fall bass line technique is where you go down in half steps in the bass line to create new chords and a new chord progression. So we'll do a little bit of both and then we'll, we'll see what happens. So uh, this is the melody here. I've written it out already. It sounds like this. We're just going to do the first phrase just to save time. Um, and there are different ways of playing this, like the basic way. I, I would basically play this without any reharmonization, and it would sound something like this. So there are some cool chords in there, but that's that's a basic version, at least compared to what we're going to do in the upcoming segment. So let's start with the waterfall bass line technique. So we're going to start with an F in the bass, and we're just going to go down chromatically like this for each note in the melody. So I like to start out, start out with just the outer voices. So that's going to sound like this. And that sounds a little weird when you don't have the inner voices to fill it out. But we're going to make it sound good, hopefully. Hopefully we'll make it sound good. Uh, let's try this. Um, we're going to start with F major. All right, and I will write these out as we go. Um, so I, I'll just write the chord above. So remember, this right here, that's the melody. So I'll write the chords above. So this will be F major, just regular F major. Nothing fancy. F major triad with the A in the, in the top voice. All right, then we're going to go to an E minor 11. Classic. One of my favorites. Anybody that's been watching my videos knows I'm a big fan of that, that one right there. That's uh, just stacked thirds. All right, uh, then we're going to go to something like that. This is, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, this is an E flat... E flat 13 with a sharp 11. It's a mouthful. E flat 13, sharp 11. And I really like this voicing too. This is a, a B flat major 9 over D. Really great voicing or great chord. B flat major 9 over a D. And remember, this A, that's just the melody note. Okay, let's keep going. Review. Okay, I kind of like that. So this is... This is like a D flat, sharp 11. D flat 7, or maybe even D flat 9, with a sharp 11. Go into a C minor 9. Here's what we have so far. All right, now we have an, a B flat. We're on the second line. I'm going to go for a B flat. Well, this is actually a B chord. B major 13. So the B flat is really a, an A sharp, but just think of it as B major 13. Wait, is this? Yeah, this is a B major 13. Uh, and then we'll go to, we have another B flat after that. So um, actually, let's just do, instead of B major 13, this is just a slight adjustment. 
you know, you guys can see how I'm kind of working this stuff out as I go. If you play a chord, if you're doing this exercise and you play a chord you don't like, if you don't like the sound of it in context, just try something else. Remember, the formula is what chord could it be? So that means there are options, right? So we don't have to do whatever we play first. You can try a few things out. So I'm going to go with uh, this voicing here. And we could think of this as B major 9, or you could call it like an F sharp over B. Why don't we just do that? We'll call it F sharp over B, just to be clear about uh, the voicing. So and then we'll go to a B flat 13. B flat 13. Or, and then I like this one. This is A alt, A7 alt. So that C in the top voice, that's the sharp nine. Let's do a recap just so you can hear what this all sounds like in context. do a flat major 9 a flat major 9 the b flat is the 9 there on top by the way just a little side note i like this grace note action going from the 6 to the 7 it's one of my go-to moves and it just dresses up the chord a little bit and i'll do the same thing actually we're going down a half step there in the melody so why don't we do the same thing we'll go down a half step with the chord a little parallel motion, but should sound nice. Now, we're ending on a G major 9. We're resolving to a G major 9. And remember, we're starting in F. This original song is in F, or at least the key that I'm playing it in. And to end on a G major 9 is a completely different chord. It doesn't belong in the key of F. So, you know, that's one of the things, one of the reasons I like this type of reharmonization or this approach to reharmonization because it brings you to new territory that you might not have explored otherwise. So here's the whole thing. That's wild. Now, that's a lot of harmony there. If I were to do this in a more uh, sort of like a real life situation, if I were composing or reharmonizing something outside of, a, outside of this exercise world, I probably wouldn't have a chord change on every single melody note, but I'm trying to push it to the max here. You know, I like to use the analogy of swinging with two bats to warm up. You know, if you're playing baseball, you swing with two bats, you have a heavier bat, and then when you go to actually swing for real, it's easy because you've done this really intense workout. And that's what this is. It's really intense. And if you can if you can pull it off with every note having a chord, then having a, you know one chord for several notes is is going to be a breeze. Um, and we'll maybe we'll do that in a second. Uh, we'll, you know to make it a little bit more applicable to like a real reharm. But this is the waterfall baseline technique with great is great is thy faithfulness. This is a descending bass line in the left hand and just the regular right hand melody with a bunch of chords to fill it out in between. So let's now go back to the formula. Remember the formula is if X note is Y chord tone, what chord could it be? And maybe we'll throw in a little bit of the, the waterfall bass line as well. Because remember the waterfall bass line works well because of that chromatic motion in the left hand, in the bass line. Whenever you have something moving by a half step, that's going to be really smooth voice leading. You can't get smaller than an interval or you can't play an interval that's smaller than a half step unless you're doing like quarter tones or something like that. But we're not doing that here. Uh, the point is that if you want it to sound smooth, you know, all of these really weird chords, if you want them to sound smooth going from one to the next, it helps to have good voice leading, especially in the bass. So you can force that by doing a chromatic bass line. You don't have to go down, by the way. You can go up if you want to chromatically, but uh, down is a, is a good place to start. Let's clear the slate here. Let's start again with just the melody. And this time we're gonna be a little bit more free with it. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna start in F again. You know what we'll do? We'll do this. We're going to sprinkle some of this reharmonization in. We're not going to go all the way with this with every single note because, again, that's kind of overwhelming to most people to hear that much harmony. And to tell you the truth, 
in my opinion, it's it's more than you need. And it's it's kind of nice to have a contrast between the regular harmony and then something that's a little bit more out there. So we'll start off with just the basic changes. We'll start off with F major. And then we'll do something like that. So we're going to start with just F major for the first four notes for all of those A's. Well, not, not all of them. I guess uh, we switch to a B flat major. Oh, wow. B flat major seven, um, and then we'll go to B flat minor six there. Now, here, when we go to this B flat, we'll start to mix it up a little bit. So I'm gonna use the formula technique. We have a B flat in the melody, and I'm gonna ask myself, okay, I'm gonna pick a chord tone. Um, I like 11s a lot. So let's say if, if B flat, is the 11, what chord could it be? Well, what chord sounds good with an 11 on top? Just a regular 11, not like a sharp 11 or anything like that. It's gonna be a minor chord for the most sort of uh, consonant sound. So we're gonna go with, well, let me ask you guys, if B flat is the 11 on a minor chord, what chord is it? Well, what's B flat the 11 of? Remember, B flat's also four. So, anybody know? I, okay. It's F, <laughs> it's an F chord. So we're gonna play F minor 11. That old that old voicing that I played before on, on E minor, now we're gonna do it on F minor. We have the B flat on top, stacked thirds. All right, so we have, we've enacted the formula. Now let's switch to the waterfall bass line. We're gonna go chromatically down in the bass. So we're gonna go to, an, we're going to an E in the bass. Let's play this one, this is, uh, what is this? This is like F sharp over E. Let's see, we're, we have to write the first chord in. So we have F minor 11, and then we're gonna do E, um, I don't know, let's call it, can we call it E69 with a sharp 11? It's a little bit weird, but it gets the point across, especially considering the voicing is one, three, six, nine, sharp 11. So that kind of gets the point across. You know, there's there's more than one more than one <laughs> there's more than one way to write this chord. Um, let's keep going. So we have, and then we don't have to continue doing waterfall bass. I mean, it sounds good right there, but. Let's say we have that C on top and you know, let's do let's go back to the formula. If C is the sharp nine, what chord is it? A7. Or A altered. I used this voicing before, it's great. So we're going from A7 altered to we have a B flat in the melody there. Let me just get this A7 written in. A7 alt. And then we're gonna do B flat. I'm just gonna do a voicing that I like. This is B flat add nine over D. One of my favorites. I really like putting the third in the bass. B flat add nine over D. And by the way, you know, the thing is, once you have voicings that you like, whether it's, you know, this minor 11 voicing or this kind of stuff, you can start using those voicings anywhere, really, because a good voicing can kind of stand on its own. Sure, it does help to have good voice leading and, and it can help to know a little bit of functional harmony, but. You know, as I've been saying for the past couple of videos, if you have strong voicings, you can get away with so much, which is why I keep uh, telling you guys about Sick Chords Volume 1, which is my collection of voicings. Now, I've been telling you the other thing, the other thing I've been telling you is to not get it because on Monday, which I guess is tomorrow, uh, I'm, I'm doing a, a really crazy deal with a bunch of bonuses and I really want you guys to check it out and get that 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 great price and all the extra stuff I'm going to throw in there. So if you want to be notified about when that page is live for six for the sick chords, I'm calling it the sick chords bo bonus bundle, people. Sick chords bonus bundle. Um, I'm sending the link out to my email list. That's where I do all of my sort of specials. So anyway, I want to get back to this in just a second. But if you want to get on that list so you get notified about that sick chords bonus bundle, which, by the way, is my collection of all of my favorite voicings. It's over 100 voicings. It's transposed into all keys. Uh, there's MIDI. The note names are written in the voicing so you don't have to read music. Um, you can you'll learn. I'll, I'll tell you all about it later. Um, but get on the list so that you can get that access to the, the deal. Anyway, let's get back to this. We have one more chord here. Um, we're coming from B flat add nine over D. And 
we're gonna just we're gonna resolve back to f. I mean, this this is f over c, so we have the fifth in the base. But I feel like that's appropriate since we're in the key of f, and we'll kind of round this all out with resolving to a chord that feels like home, which is really nice. And you know, we have two chords here: the B flat add nine over D, followed by F over C. You can use different notes in the bass. You don't always have to have the root of the chord in the bass. That's going to open up a lot of possibilities as well. Let's play the whole thing and hear what it sounds like, starting from the beginning. Nice. So there are some harmonic surprises in there, and, th and that's the point. I start off simple and then introduce some craziness, and then I round it out by finishing back in the key of F. So there's a journey there. There's a harmonic journey. And that's what I want you guys to be thinking about as you are exploring these other chords. Think about what kind of feeling the chord conveys. Is it is it exciting? Is it sweet? Is it it just any kind of emotion that you can associate with a chord is going to help you write better chord progressions. It's not just about the theory. It's really about how the chord sounds in the context of the piece you're writing or in the context of the chord progression that you're using to reharmonize a classic melody like this. So I'm trying to combine some of the stuff we've been talking about here. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Remember to sign up for the Sick Chords bonus bundle access list, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to stop ranting and, and rambling. I hope you I hope you guys like this. Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, if you want to if you want to do uh, if you want me to do more videos like this, I'm happy to. You know, I really I haven't been doing the piano stuff in a while, at, at least on YouTube. I haven't been doing a lot of harmony on YouTube um, and I kind of miss it. If you guys want more, let me know. And uh, I'm, I'm really going to stop this time with the with the rambling. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon. Bye.